For those of you that are not in the know, Sanzo is one of my favorite servants that got added into FGO, and by added, I mean she wasn't in the original animes, games, all that stuff, etc. So for her to finally get some love and get a buff made me super ecstatic, and I just could not wait to cover her in this video because I really haven't had any time to shill for Sanzo, but I think she's really, really good. I'm actually quite glad that she's in like the general pool so that people can get spooked by her because I think she really does help buff the power of anybody's box, especially for some of you free to play players. She's really gonna help you out a lot when fighting like assassin, zerk enemies, and just bringing a lot of utility to your team. But if you enjoy FGO content, I upload videos every single day and all I ask for in return is a like and subscribe. But if you want to go that extra mile to show your support, click that join button and become a channel member. With that being said, let's go ahead and dive right into Sansa. That actually kind of sounds a little dirty, but let's just look at her deck. How about that? So her deck is quite good. I know a lot of you guys are already seeing the six hits on the extra attack. That's something that I love to see. For those of you that don't know, and again, a little extra card lesson that I have to throw in every single video for newer players, but the extra card is a composite card. It gens stars, it gens NP and it does damage so having a very good extra card means your deck is significantly better especially if you're a servant that's going to be brave chaining a lot and i don't know if you see that np charge per attack at 0.82 percent having six hits with that high of an np gen means her extra attack is going to be genning some pretty decent np back some of you are ahead of the rest of the class and already know about one of sanzo's skills that's going to make that even more cracked do not stay ahead of the class stay with the program we'll get to that when we get there something else to note is that she does have a caster deck despite being a buster like dps servant this does kind of suck because you can't buster brave chain with her np but it's also good that she has a triple arch deck because you can gen her np a lot easier and as you guys will see as we go through her kit she is literally just an np genning machine on that note her first skill is an 80 percent battery a metric ton of np right 80 percent is basically filling your entire np gauge i imagine when they buff this skill they're going to bump that 80 to 100 percent and if they do that's going to give sanzo so much utility because servants that have that 100 percent battery reach this like meme level of utility because you can literally slap whatever ce you want on them and they'll just destroy whatever right and because Sanzo does like really good damage and because for, i mean those of you that just played the grail live event on jp there were some really odd nodes to say the least where you have like one enemy two enemies two enemies or like three enemies two enemies one enemy like the structure of the quest get very odd so the more that they're going to push that the more that someone like sanzo is going to be amazing where you can just slap whatever event ce you want on her and then just have her obliterate the single enemy in one of those like one person nodes right but that's if she gets 100 percent. 80 percent is still very very good it has some utility with like say Merlin's charisma, you can put it in a Castoria team with her charisma, she'll get her to 100%. Popping both of Waver's skills will get her to 100% as well. Like, there is some utility there, but I also understand people wanting to not have to rely on that, wanting to be able to use those charismas and all those other skills on other servants, right? Because, you know, some farming setups get, like, very technical with the amount of NP you need. But, irregardless, still very, very good. But then she's also getting 20% NP damage for one turn, which is going to kind of help out her damage a little bit because i don't know if you know this but sanzo hits like a truck she hits really really hard and while it does only last for one turn these effects are very synonymous it's very good that they're on the same skill together because you're gonna pop the np gauge when you want to use your np and then you're also getting np damage good design for sanzo's first skill second skill this was kind of an odd skill when it first dropped i mean it was still good because I'll appreciate getting a taunter any day of the week, but it taunts everybody to her and then gives her 1500 damage reduction for one turn on a six turn cooldown. And that was a little odd, but like the whole point was that it was like Sanzo's charisma. So then when they buffed her like yesterday, they were like, why don't we just actually make it a charisma and then slapped on 20% attack for the entire party, which this is good for two reasons. One, because Sanzo can kind of spam her NP despite being a buster servant, but she only has that NP damage on the first NP. And then after that, the damage kind of falters a little bit. So this, for one, is going to help Sanzo's damage be a bit more consistent, but two, it's going to make that first NP hit a lot harder, which I really love because I want Sanzo to be like the best servant in the game. So I'm fine with her doing this. I mean, 
Before somebody flames me in the comments, no, I'm not saying she's the best servant of the game, but I would not be upset if she was. That's basically what I'm saying, right? But this now makes it a very, very powerful utility skill. You're getting a charisma on a five turn cooldown and then also giving her the ability to taunt herself that can kind of be used to protect some of your support casters because you're probably going to be using her with like double Merlin or something. Preventing your Merlins from getting shredded by the boss by having her take one hit or two is going to be very fine. Overall, a very solid skill. Now, third skill, this is the one that I was talking about where it's like really cracked because Sanzo already has very good NP gen. Her triple arts deck, even though they're only two hits, the NP gen stat is high enough as is and then she has a six hit extra attack. And then on top of that, they gave her an 80% battery. So I, I was pretty sure her NP gen was fine as is, but then they give her like this insane party, just support skill, right? Where she's giving everybody 30% NP gen for three turns, 30% star gen for three turns, giving everybody one hit of debuff immunity for one turn, all on a five turn cooldown. And this is insanely cracked out, and it's super, super good. Even if you're not using Sanzo with, like, another DPS, if it's just, like, Sanzo and double Merlin. For one, this is going to help Sanzo's extra attack actually gen a lot of stars. It's also going to have her NP genning a decent amount of stars. But then it's also, probably more critically, going to help Sanzo just fire off her NP every single turn, pretty much. And then the support casters that are with her who again probably are going to be Merlin considering she's a buster servant. It's going to help them get her NP back because they're going to be ginning their NP easier which gives more NP to Sanzo and stars to Sanzo so then she can do like critical hits to gen even more NP and then it just becomes an absolute just runaway freight train that nobody can stop. Overall her skills are redonkulously good. For a servant that came out during year one her skills are incredibly stacked like even for NA players you don't have the 20% charisma but you have everything else with Sanzo, and she's still insanely cracked out of her mind. And then she has a buffed NP, 12 hits, again, probably going to be genning very decent amounts of stars if you have her third skill up, because you're just doing so many hits that you have to gen stars at that point, right? She's piercing defense and reducing enemies critical attack chance by 80% at the start to then 120% at full overcharge. Like, I need you guys to understand how, like future proved that was because like i just talked about serenity yesterday and it's like oh she's doing like 20 percent critical attack chance lowering but sanzo's at bare minimum starting with 80 percent which is like you're not doing critical hits at all like she's absolutely insane out of her mind she's such a solid just good servant all around despite me saying all that though i'm going to tell you guys to not summon for Sanzo who's on rate of, unless you really, really like Sanzo like I do. Like, I really, really love Sanzo. Look, she's adorable, she's very good. Like, what else could you want? But she is a servant that's literally like on every single banner. She's one of those servants that's in the general pool. I mean, I know I've been spooked by her a few times. So I wouldn't go out of my way to be like summoned for this servant that's on every banner, especially when we don't really know what's coming out next on JP. Like we're kind of in a lull period because Grail Live was super hype. And it brought like 12 different servants getting costumes, like a bunch of servants got buffed, tons of raid ups, super fun event. But now we're kind of in this like, okay, Camelot movie's coming out. We got some buffs with some of the relevant servants. But then we probably have a really hype event coming up. Like, I don't believe we've had our Gouda Gouda event for this year. So who knows what's going to be coming out for that? Because that's generally like a pretty solid event, right? Like MHX Altar is pretty good. Okita Altar is pretty decent. Mao Nobu is kind of stinky when she comes out. We'll cover that when she comes out on NA. But after her buff, she's pretty good. And then Himiko is busted nuts. So I would maybe hold out to see what we're going to get for like, what is it? Guda Guda 5, 6 at this point. See what we get over the horizon. I would kind of like hold on to your courts. I guess she's on every single banner. I would say if you really must have Sanzo, just pick her up with the ticket. I know everybody's going to freak out and be like, but you're supposed to pick Waver with the ticket. But I mean, if you already have Waver, already have like double cast Tori, you have like double Scotty. You can afford to pick a servant that you really like, you know? Because at the end of the day, you could pick Waver, who might make your box a bit better. But if you're going to be more happy with Sanzo in your box, then you just pick the servant you want, you know? But anyway, I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think of Sanzo? Are you as high on Sanzo that I am? Leave a like and subscribe. And with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. You guys have yourselves a nice rest of your week. And I'm gone. Peace, late guys.